Well, this is gonna be a tough work day. Super tough, drag me out of my nice warm office. <laughs> Come on, Maddie. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. Today I'm going to show you how to make action cameras look more cinematic and yes, I am including a 360 camera as an action camera. I think it's actually the best action camera nowadays. It's just so fun and easy to use. You don't have to worry about what angle, it, where is it pointing, what's it capturing, it's getting everything. And the disappearing stick is just so cool. It's like having a personal little mini drone stuck on you throughout all of the crazy action. Of course, the quality of 360 cameras isn't quite as good as something like this, the GoPro Hero 10. But with action footage, I think people are a little bit quicker to forgive uh, any quality differences. At some point in our careers, we're all gonna have to use action cameras and whether it's a GoPro or a DJI action or a 360 camera, this is what I do to make it look more cinematic. Number one, it's all about placement. One of the coolest things about action cameras is that they can literally go anywhere. They're usually pretty small, lightweight, so you can put them in places that you couldn't put a normal bigger camera. You can rig them up in ways that you normally wouldn't rig up a bigger camera. And half the battle is just finding the coolest places for those action cameras. And that's one of the big reasons I keep talking about 360 cameras being the best action cameras, because all you have to do is worry about where it is and then you can choose whatever angle you want from there. Whereas with a traditional action camera, you not only have to worry about where it is, but also which way it's pointing and if you're pointing a little bit off and you're exploding a car and you missed that exploding car, well then you you missed that. <laughs> but with a 360 camera, it doesn't matter. As long as it's in a cool place, you will get the shot no matter what, and you'll actually have a bunch of different angles that you could choose. So with a 360 camera, when I'm snowboarding, I can really quickly just, you know, put it out in front of me, get that shot, put it low to the snow and get a really cool dynamic shot, put it behind me, get that, put it above me. I can move it around. I don't have to worry about the angle as long as the placement of the camera is cool. That's all that matters. And so I'm just constantly just moving where it is and then I just keep riding. It's, it's literally, if you have not used a 360 camera while you're doing anything like snowboarding, jet skiing, running, any action really, 360 cameras are such a cool way of capturing that action. And for me, because I just have way more fun using a 360 camera, I don't have to worry about as much. Even if the quality isn't as good, I find myself opting for the 360 camera instead of the traditional action camera. Number two, movement. If you're not capturing really cool, fast moving, dynamic movements, then you're probably not using your action camera to its full potential. That's why I love FPV drones and I have a new appreciation for GoPros because they just work so well. That crazy fast movement with that wide field of view is just so dynamic, nobody cares what camera this was shot on because the movement is just so intriguing. If you're just holding or getting static shots, no movement, I really think you're not getting everything you can out of your action camera. And it also helps to have the movement be close to something. So if you're flying FPV, it helps to fly close to the ground or close to a building or through something. It just makes it look like the movement is way more dynamic. Whereas if you're just out in the air way high, even if you're flying really fast, 
it looks pretty boring. And that leads me to number three, avoid close-ups of faces. Even though I just said get close to the ground while you're having that movement, cameras like a GoPro are fixed focus. So there is no autofocus. And so they say anything past a foot is in focus, but that's not really true. If you're holding out the camera like this, the background is way more in focus than your face. And so for the audience, it's subtle, but it's hard to keep your attention on that person because the background is more crisp. So your eyes naturally want to go to the background and they're not really, you're not really focusing on the person talking because they're kind of out of focus. And then number two, it's kind of where the action cameras start falling apart and they just don't look as good. Skin tones especially are very hard for cameras to render. And when you're using smaller sensors, smaller cameras, it just doesn't look as good. Number four, wider is better. Hear me out, this, this might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but first off, when you're using a wide angle lens like I am right now, there's naturally less depth of field. So the background isn't as blurry. So right now I'm at 16. If I go to 35, look how much background blur I have now. And so if I had this crop for an action camera, it would feel really just like not cinematic, low quality because you wouldn't have any of that nice blur. But now when I go farther out wide and I have my GoPro here kind of getting the same angle, yeah, the mirrorless is still way better looking. Like I said, avoid the close-ups of faces, but there isn't as much background blur here, and just like there isn't very much on the GoPro. So naturally, when you have a wide lens, there isn't as much of the shallow depth of field, which is, you know, kind of cinematic looking. That's why I would say shoot wider instead of the narrow field of views. That's when it really kind of just gives away that you're using an action camera. Also, like I mentioned, when you're wider, that movement becomes way more dynamic, looks way more cinematic, way more cool. Now, especially with 360 cameras, you can overdo this. Uh, you can go way too wide. You don't want to go like tiny planet <laughs> wide when everything is just like fisheye and warped that's not that good. And so that leads me to number five. You want wide, but not fisheye. Fisheye is not cinematic looking, and fisheye is that kind of like really warped out look, but you can actually fix this in post. So even if you're using a really wide, like the super view, I think it's called in the GoPro, you can just fix that in post to make it look less like a fisheye, and I'm pretty sure Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure cameras like the GoPro are already doing some uh, de-fishing, getting rid of some of that fish eye look. But if it's not doing enough, you can always do that in post. For example, in Final Cut Pro, it's really easy. Just add on the fish eye effect. That looks great. <laughs> Okay, and then let's take it down to like maybe like minus 0 0.15, 0 0.2, and then just decrease the radius. And it's really that simple to get rid of some of that fish eye look. And there's a bunch of different ways of doing this. Actually, my very first tutorial on this channel was called How to Make GoPro Look Cinematic. And one of the biggest things I did was this de-fishing thing and I was doing an After Effects and it was like the best way ever to do it. Might still be one of the best ways, but it makes a huge difference getting rid of that warpy GoPro look and making it look more like a mirrorless, bigger sensor, wide angle lens. Number six, make sure to color grade it. Now, most of us are probably color grading all of our videos, but the tricky part is the color correction. I see this all the time with people who are mixing cameras. So they might be using something like this A7S III and then they throw in a GoPro clip and it just looks completely different. And that's like kind of a, a dead giveaway that, oh, we switched switched over to an action camera now, and that might ruin some of that, that cinematic effect, your storytelling effect, because now you're telling them, oh, we're on the action camera, we're not on the action camera, we're on it. The better you can do the color correction process, the less people will even realize that like, oh, whoa, whoa, how, did, how did you capture this angle? And really it's just a 360 camera, but because the colors and the exposure look so similar, 
people didn't even realize that you switched cameras. So make sure you're tweaking the exposure, the contrast, and also the colors, especially adding saturation. I feel like a lot of people just don't add enough saturation to their action camera footage and then it just looks like this weird desaturated mess all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, so make sure you're color correcting. And then finally, number seven, know when to use an action camera and when to use a mirrorless camera. You don't always want to be using an action camera if you can avoid it. Even I feel like an iPhone looks better for close-ups, for example, than a GoPro a lot of the time. Action cameras are incredible tools and they help us to capture those moments that would be virtually impossible on a bigger camera but you also don't wanna be using one of these all the time because they do have their weaknesses like those close-ups of faces. I just don't think it looks very good. A small action camera will never be as good as your mirrorless camera, so don't expect the same cinematic qualities from this little guy. But like we talked about, there are a lot of things that we can do to kind of mask the lower quality look of a GoPro, for example, things like movement, use it properly and it's gonna look incredible. You can make it look cinematic, but if you rely on it when you're not supposed to be using it, it's just not gonna look very cinematic. I wonder how many comments I'm gonna get about cinematic. That's not cinematic, this is cinematic. What, what is cinematic? Oh, there we go again, cinematic. Calm down guys, it's just filmmaking. It's not that serious. All right, I think that's it for me. Uh, hopefully these tips help you to make your action cameras look more cinematic. Don't forget to use these guys. They're very, very powerful tools if used properly. Make them look cinematic. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.